Hey guys, Paul again here from Rapids. I'm with Ben Weezer, our resident beer expert, and today we're going to talk about glycol chillers or power packs. So Ben, tell me a little bit about what this box does. So this is our piece of equipment that we use to maintain the temperature of our draft beer from our walk-in cooler to our tower so that we don't have foam building up as the beer warms up from in, the, in that distance. Okay, okay. So this is the refrigeration unit that's going to cool the glycol lines that are in trunk line, right? Exactly. Tell us a little bit about yeah, trunk line. So, so here's a sample of trunk line and what we've got here is, so this is an eight product trunk line, so there's eight beer lines in here. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, wrapped in some foil to keep them bound together and then some insulation. And then there's the two glycol lines in there. So basically what this unit does is cools down a reservoir of glycol that then gets pumped through these two lines that acts as just uh, you know the cold line, the cold refrigeration that's maintaining this beer temperature from point A to point B. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well let's take a closer look to how this thing works. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Ben, let's pull the lid off this thing and uh, why don't you give us a tour? Yeah, let's take a look under the hood. So, We've got some basic refrigeration components in here. Compressor, uh, evaporator fan, this is your thermostat control so you can adjust your temperature that's going to be inside the reservoir itself. Okay. Obviously in here, this is your copper coil that's going to be, this is your glycol reservoir, uh, your thermostat here, the copper coil from the compressor which it contains the coolant itself. Um, to keep this reservoir of glycol cold and then you've got your uh, supply and return lines over here in the front. Okay, so this right here is going to be filled with the bath of glycol and, and the return line is going to come through this little nozzle, right? And exactly. then it's going to go through that coil and then the refrigeration is going to recool it? Actually, the refrigeration, uh, the refrigeration coolant itself is what's inside the coil the liquid that's coming in through your return line is just circulating inside the bath itself. Okay, okay. So after it's cooled, then it goes to the pump, I take it? Yep, and then a pump is gonna draw out through this line here. Mm -hmm. This pump is going to be running 24 seven, so don't get worried when you go to plug this in and it seems like that pump's never stopping. This one will always circulate. We'll be running constantly. Okay, okay. This one will cycle on and off as necessary uh -huh. to maintain the temperature in the reservoir. And that's why there's two outlets on this unit, isn't there? Exactly. Okay, so um, I noticed that some of these glycol chillers have more than one pump. Why would that be? Um, in the case of if you've got a exceptionally large tower, like. 20 or more products that maybe you're going to run two 10 product trunk lines to and that way you can run uh, one pump for each trunk line that's going into that tower so that for any reason if a pump goes out um, you don't lose all 20 of your products you would okay. just lose half of them or in the instance that you've got um, towers that are in two different locations in your bar and you need a pump to circulate uh, glycol through two different trunk lines going to two different locations. Okay. Okay, Ben, so wh what is it we need to know or what do we want to look for when we when we go to make a purchase of one of these? Um, the main things that you're looking at are the overall length of trunk line that a particular chiller can handle. It's usually going to be listed in feet. Um, Depending on the you know the horsepower, the BTUs, different factors like that determine how long of a trunk line uh, a particular chiller can handle and you know maintain the temperature within with of the beer within that trunk line. Okay, okay. Um, the other thing that you have to take into consideration is for most manufacturers of trunk line, um, once you get up above an eight product trunk line, once you get ten or more, instead of just having the the one supply and one return line in there, there's going to be a, a second supply and return line in there. Now, what that does for our chillers, what that means is that we have to, we have twice as many lines that we have to cool, so we have to, we have effectively halved the ability of the machine for the distance that it needs to cover. Right, right. So if a machine is rated for, say, 125 feet, um, that is only taking into account if it's got a single supply and return line. Once it, you've got a trunk line that has 
two supplies and two returns, you only get about 60. You're feet. only getting about 60 feet out. Got it. Got it. So. Good. Good info. Okay, so we want to the the how much trunk line we have, but 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 realistically, how many glycol lines we have is a big factor. Yeah, and so okay. the number of beers that you're running through that trunk line is going to have an impact on the size of chiller that you're going to need. So, do you need two pumps then if you have to not necessarily what you can do is if you've got a trunk line that has two supplies and two returns is you'll hook your primary supply line up off of your circulation pump uh, to one of the supply lines um, once you get to the tower you'll take that supply line into the tower uh, take the return line out of the tower come into your first return line here then you're gonna take that back down into the walk-in cooler once you're there, normally with a single supply and return, you'd come into the return line into the chiller and be done with it. Uh, um, another so option, going. another option that you would have then, though, if you've got two supplies and two returns, is just to take a stainless steel U bend and return Run that into through. the second supply line. Put another U bend in by the tower and then return it back down into the chiller. Clever, clever. Hey guys, Paul again at Rapids. Okay, we have moved out that little chiller and a day has gone by and we've moved in this big dog. So so this one is a little bit higher capacity, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, this is one of the, uh, uh, you probably even call this like a mid-range unit because we've yeah. actually just recently got some new ones in that are even bigger than this monster. Okay. Um, but as you can see here, this is a unit that's got the two pumps and circulation motors on. Um, if we right. spin this just a little bit this way, you can see um, each one's got its own uh, supply line. There's two return lines on the side over here. And spin back this way over here a little bit. And we've got our thermostat, once again, that's, main, that's uh, keeping track of the temperature of the reservoir. And if we want to pick this up, you want to give me a hand with this one? I do, I do. Be before we go to that though, I did notice this plug vent. I take it this is just a little peephole access to make yep. sure because Pretty what we're about to do guys, this thing is heavy, right? Oh yeah. So this just allows for you to see and make sure that everything's circulating? Yeah, this is basically just like a like a little top off valve. Oh, little, okay. Yeah, you, you, you saw that on the other one too, there was a little red yeah, plug. Yeah. yeah, that's basically so you don't have to lift this big monster up to get in to check the levels once it's going. Okay. So we're going to try to attempt to get this thing up in the air to show you the cool. Yep. Oh. So yeah, that's a little bigger, man. Yeah, and back down. I understand why there's a top off on it. Right. <laughs> it's a lot more convenient. <laughs> um, you, I'll, the other thing that people are going to want to do with these is they're going to want to take their glycol chiller. We didn't talk about it in the last video, but sometimes just for convenience sake and because they don't really have anywhere else to put it, they want to put it on top of the walk-in cooler. Okay. Which with some of the smaller units is fine because they're only going to weigh 50, 60 pounds. That's good. You get into this big 12 gallon unit and you're talking about this thing weighs something like 125 pounds by itself. Mm -hmm. Then you throw in 12 mm -hmm. gallons of glycol at roughly eight pounds a gallon and... Okay. I yeah, see where you're going. <laughs> things are starting to get heavy. So you got to know for sure if your walk-in cooler can even handle that kind of weight on top of it. Okay. The other thing is, is your service guy's going to cuss at you when he gets up here to, if he's ever going to do any work on it, because that space is usually kind of crowded, and then yeah. he's got to work on this great big machine or pull it back down off the top of the cooler. Okay, okay. So what we have, or what I'm seeing, is just like it, the last one we looked at, the smaller unit, all the same refrigeration components, evaporator, evaporator fan, yep. obviously bigger, beefier, compressor, yep. bigger, beefier, uh, so we got more horsepower, we got more BTU. Exactly. So, and a bigger coil means yep. we can essentially just cool a larger volume of glycol. Exactly. So we can support longer runs and yep. more runs. And the larger volume of glycol also gives you um, a bigger barrier for like sudden temperature changes. Like if you get oh, a sure. sudden heat wave or something like that and the temperature spikes, you've got more liquid in here, which means uh, it's less easy for it to change temperatures really fast, which means, you know, your compressor isn't working as hard. It's not working as hard. Perfect. Right? Wow, Ben. Well, thanks for all of your knowledge when it comes to these, uh, these glycol chillers. We certainly appreciate that. 
And guys, if you should have any other questions going forward, feel free to give Ben a call here at the shop or any of the other beer experts or jump on our online chat. Thank you so much for your time, Ben. Anytime, Paul.